So I had a uh, lightning strike uh, six days ago and it damaged an underground Cat 6 cable. So uh, I re-pulled a section of it <clears throat> and there's a section of the cable we spliced just to see how well it would work. Now, I just ran a test and uh, this test, the wire, the wire map or uh, what is the word they're looking for here? Or uh, distance uh, failed, but the wire map is uh, correct. So I'm just going to see if I can figure out how to get back out of here. There we go. So we're going to run a test. We have a link established. So that wire map fail is something that I just discussed. But we do have a thousand base T connection. And you'll see the cable performance is going to pass as well. So I'll show you why in a second here. Maybe longer than a second. There we go. You see that we passed. And let's see, cable performance. We sent 840 packets and received 840 packets. Uh, so that was fine. And let's see here. Let me go back. I don't remember how to go back. <clears throat> but anyway, it, it passed. So And this is what I did. Now you're not supposed to do this, but I spliced the wire rather than climbing through the attic to replace a segment of the wire. I tested to make sure that the wire was open before I did that it wasn't damaged. So it was only the underground portion that was damaged. Now these guys right here, this is what those are. 3M Scotch Lock Connector URs. They're handy to have around. <clears throat> They've been used for probably decades by telephone professionals. Notice I'm still keeping the twist kind of tight, but the reason we failed the test is because, you know, it's probably measuring the impedance or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how the tester works, but it says, hey, something's not right. So when we terminate these on connectors, we're supposed to not have more than a half an inch of this untwisted. But um, I just wanted to point out that this will work um, it's not the standard, but it will work, especially if you're in an emergency. So like around here, we have tornadoes and real storms and things like that. And if you had to get your network up and running in a hurry, you could splice these together even with wire nuts. I knew a guy one time <clears throat> who had an entire city hall running off of uh, Cat 3 wire, which is telephone wire. And, and uh, you know, he had been there for a really long time. And so... Cat5 became a new thing, and he converted his entire network in City Hall over to Cat5, and he was pushing 100 megabits over Cat3 wire and wire nuts. Um, I ran the test, I mean, they <laughs> at that facility, I remember. and uh, But it's just something to share, that if you've got to splice these things to get them to work, you can. I would never do this for a client unless it was an emergency and they understood that. But again, if you're a homeowner and you've got to get something to work, I'm sure that you'll never notice the, uh, the lack of performance that this method creates. Hope that helps. <clears throat>